Traveler, you've come at a good time. Wait, this sounds like another commission. <laughs> it is as you say. The commission this time around is of high importance. It pertains to the safety of the Avidia Forest's inhabitants. Huh? What happened? Not long ago, we received word that a section of the Avidia Forest seems to have become contaminated. Contaminated? You mean... a new withering zone? I don't know about the specifics, but I hear that strange things are happening to people who cross through that region. The Avidia Forest inhabitants won't leave their homes so easily. If we allow this contaminated region to expand, the consequences could be unimaginable. That's why I want to ask you to investigate the situation. Even if all you can do is stop the contamination from spreading, that will still save many people. This is forest business. Hmm. Maybe Tainari will know something. Let's go find him! your voice down. Tainari, everything's spinning. Am I going to die? <laughs> tell mom that I should have listened to her, and tell Suna that I'm sorry for breaking her toy. I didn't tell her because I was scared that she wouldn't play with me anymore. Tainari? I heard that people turn into birds after they die. Is that true? I feel like I'm getting lighter. What happened? Tainari, is he? Okay, okay, enough nonsense. You just have a small fever. Take your medication and rest. You'll be bouncing off the walls in no time. Really? Then... Can you keep the thing about the toy a secret for now? 
No can do. You're a big kid now. Once you've recovered, go and apologize. Keeping secrets to yourself won't solve anything. Oh. Hey, let me ask you something. I recall that you're usually pretty healthy. How did you get this sick all of a sudden? I don't know either. Mom's been telling me not to play in the forest. I just wanted to look inside. It's different from before. I got lost and went around in a huge circle. After I got out, I... I started feeling dizzy. Could it be? Hmm. So that's how this whole mess happened. Anyway, go rest. No running around until I say so, got it? Traveler, Paimon, let's step out for now. Mr. Forest Watcher, how is my son? I gave him some antipyretics. Let him rest here for a while. I told him that he would feel better after some medicine and rest, but I only said that to comfort him. His symptoms resemble a fever, but something else is causing them. They seem more akin to a disruption in his psyche. Antipyretics won't be of much use. What do we do? Mr. Forest Watcher, you have to help him. If memory serves, a plant called Vasunti grass can help soothe the mind. A small number grow in arid deserts. They usually look like shriveled weeds, but can be revitalized with a splash of water. They're expensive and unable to grow in the Avidya Forest's climate, so I don't have any on hand. I'll ask the caravans. Go find Kale, have her prepare medicinal tools and a set of traveling gear for me. All right. Thank you. Contaminated region, huh? Is that why you two are also here? Yep. Is it a new withering zone? Doesn't seem like one. Whether you look at scale, internal conditions, or resultant effects, they're completely different. The only thing they have in common is that they aren't welcome. This nuisance made itself home in the Avidya forest, so I can't turn a blind eye. We feel the same way! All right. Let's contact the caravans first and purchase some Vasanti grass. We can also ask about the contaminated region. There's no time to waste. We have to move quickly. Let's go. Excuse me, I'd like to purchase some Vasanti grass. Do you have any? <sighs> I'm sorry, Mr. Forest Watcher, but we've been closed for the past few days. Closed? Now that's odd. It's my first time hearing you say something like that. Uh, it's a long story. Some of our goods were stolen recently. They were mechanical parts that we got from the Academia. Although they're old models, they still fetch a good price on the market. Our caravans had to pull together Mora to afford those parts. Now that they've been lost, we'll likely come up short this trip. All the merchants talked it over and we decided to raise the prices of our remaining inventory. Until this plan takes effect, none of us can privately sell anything. I don't get it. If these goods are so important, then why not think of a way to get them back? Raising prices won't solve anything. 
At best, you're shoving the consequences of the robbery onto your customers. Mr. Forest Watcher, it's not that we don't want to. It's just the thief disappeared into the deepest parts of the forest. We asked around, and apparently the forest has been very unusual as of late. Anyone who goes in experiences mental anomalies. We can't keep waiting out here for the thief to come out. All we could do is come up with another solution. So the bandit hid in the contaminated region after stealing those mechanical parts. How many people were there in total? Were they not affected by the contaminated region? That crook came from the contaminated region. As for how many, uh, there weren't any people. No people? Uh, even if I tell you, you might not believe me. Uh, oh, fine. The thief that stole our parts was a huge mechanical crab. What the heck? The Avidia Forest has creatures like that? Uh, to be honest, I'd rather not think about it. It moved too skillfully to be new at this. It came out of nowhere. Before we could react, it swiped our goods and ran away. We were all shocked. By the time we came to our senses, the thief was already long gone. I see. If we help you retrieve your stolen goods, then business will return to normal? Oh, but of course! Uh, not only that, but you'll become one of our caravan's VIPs on all future purchases of any... Uh... Enough. Tell me something that's actually useful. Any leads on that mechanical crab? Maybe one. After our goods were stolen, we specifically got someone to assess the situation. If you're interested, you can go and talk to them. All right. We'll go and have a word. After the goods were stolen, I made multiple inquiries with nearby caravans and residents. It turns out that many others have also been robbed by that crooked crab. However, the crab only seems to be interested in machinery. It doesn't even bat an eye at other valuables. A caravan carrying a large amount of Mora had an uneventful trip, but another caravan had a child whose metal toy was taken. Whatever the case, that thing is a scourge. We'll eventually think of a way to get rid of it. I heard from the caravanners that there have been a lot of robberies lately, but we haven't been affected. We don't normally see the mechanical crab, and it doesn't disturb our daily lives. It only shows up when the caravans are here and it runs back to the contaminated region after it's done making a mess. You haven't tried capturing it? We have, but it's too agile and fast. However, we did unexpectedly learn something the last time we tried to capture it. It apparently lives in the deepest part of the forest, so instead of immediately moving its spoils, it first hides them nearby. Once its stash grows large enough, it moves everything in one go, You'll have to move fast if you want those goods back. That mechanical crab is fast, strong, and a pain to deal with. Ten of us might not even be able to take that thing head on. Didn't the Academia ban research on mechanical lifeforms years ago? Where did that thing come from? Our salaries even got slashed because of it. Ugh. Who would have thought that that robber wasn't a human, but a mechanical crab? This is rough. things! Did you make any progress? We learned of its behaviors, but much still remains unclear. Assuming normal operational status, mechanical constructs generally act according to their given commands. 
If I were its owner, I'd command it to steal more valuable things. Or the mora you made. That would be the most efficient method. But it only goes after mechanical components. This doesn't make any sense. Right. It's really weird. So, you all found a way to retrieve our goods? Do you have any more mechanical parts with you? Yes, I still have a small bag of samples. They weren't taken since I keep them on me at all times. Oh, are you planning to... Under constant external conditions, organisms rarely initiate changes in their habits. Here's what we know so far. It has a mechanical composition, it lives in the contaminated region, and it comes out to steal mechanical components. If we have said components, we can lure it out, capture it, and then make observations for further conclusions. Hmm, well, chatting like this won't get us anywhere. We're only wasting time. You're right. We don't have any other options right now. This bag of samples is all yours, Mr. Forest Watcher. If you can get our goods back, the caravans will reward you generously. We don't need anything in return, but I'll be keeping this bag. I may have other uses for it later. We'll also need to borrow a Sumter Beast. Our act has to be convincing if we want the crab to fall for it. Oh yeah, no problem at all. If it means getting our things back, you can even borrow me to do whatever you need. <laughs> I'll have to decline that offer. Anyway, We'll use the mechanical components and Sumter Beast to pose as a transiting caravan and lure out the crab. Once it appears, capture it. I leave the timing to you. Don't worry, we're professionals. Looking at the trade routes and the contaminated region's current perimeter, the goods were likely stolen somewhere around here. Then let's get to it! We'll definitely capture that criminal crab! Okay. We'll start from here and have the Sumter Beast with the components on board lead the way. This Sumter Beast isn't familiar with us yet, so be calm and take your time with it. The Sumter Beast went ahead! Let's keep up with it! like it's loafing around. Or maybe it's hungry. The caravanners grew... All right, it's moving again. Strong, be careful. Oz, reveal thyself. Feel the beat. Time to rock. Hey, playing dumb won't 
save you. Spill it! Why are you stealing so many mechanical parts? Hmm, it doesn't seem capable of comprehending complex questions. Keep an eye on it. I'll search around the area for the caravan's goods. <sighs> I don't know why you're stealing mechanical parts, but they don't belong to you. Stolen items must be returned to their rightful owners. Any objections? You came from the depths of the contaminated region, right? How about you help us with something? If you take us there, I'll give you some mechanical parts as a reward. It reacted! Hmm, we can't be certain yet. Its excitement may be a simple programmed response upon seeing mechanical components. Okay, so you want the crag to lead us into the contaminated region? That's right. The contaminated region has a large and currently expanding perimeter, so it would be difficult to conduct a thorough search. If we charge straight in, we'll get lost like headless pigeons. Also, our new friend here seems to be full of secrets. I've been studying this contaminated region recently, and I have a hypothesis of my own. So to be absolutely safe, it would be best to have a guide lead the way. Paimon gets it now. Um, does this scuttler understand what you're saying? It doesn't have to, as long as it isn't hostile towards us. I gave it some components that it will definitely take back to the contaminated region. So long as it doesn't attack us, we can simply follow along. It seems to be really happy. Listen to me. Wait for us here. No running off. We'll be back soon. If you're still here when we return, I'll give you another mechanical part as a reward. Understood? I'm not sure. But our priorities are to retrieve the mechanical components and to purchase Vasanti grass to make medicine with. We should return. But before we do, we need to set up a few traps. Can't have that crab escaping. You really got them back for us! Oh, thank you all so very much. I don't know how I can repay you. Wait, didn't you want to purchase Vasanti grass? Uh, don't worry about the price. They're on the house. How many do you need? Two is enough. No, that won't do. Here, I'll throw in some more. Uh. No need. I've already received a reward from you. Reward? You mean that bag of mechanical parts? Ah, they aren't worth much compared to this merchandise. But those parts are very useful to me. Just like the Vasanti grass. I retrieved the things you needed, and you gave me what I needed in return. We're even. Oh, and before we go, just a reminder, the forest has an intricate and biodiverse ecosystem. Even if there were no mechanical crabs, other dangers are still present. Take caution on this route. Noted. Thank you all ever so much. Let's return to the village. The earlier we can give the child medicine, the sooner he'll start feeling better. So Tanger's 
supposed to be here in Gundarvaville looking for inspiration. But how do we find him? Should we yell his name at the top of our lungs? Hey, buddy. What's your name? What are you doing here all alone? Do you live in Gundarvaville? Regardless, don't worry. As a trainee forest ranger, I'll do everything I can to help you. <sighs> Hi, Miss Forest Ranger. I'm Rozzy. Don't mind me. <sighs> I know the way back to Gundarvaville. When people say, don't mind me, what they really mean is don't worry about me. That's all the more reason not to leave you alone. <sighs> What's wrong? Take your time. You can tell me all about it. Huh. That voice sounds familiar. I once heard it somewhere before. Tainari patrol the forest. What brings you here? We're here on an errand. We heard your voice, so we thought we'd come ask you for help. You seem kind of busy, though. <laughs> um, I'll be fine. Y you go help them first, Miss Forest Ranger. I'm okay, really. <laughs> the sand got into my eyes, that's all. What a well-mannered child. Sand? There is not a lot of sand in a forest. You keep saying you're okay because you don't want us to know what you're upset about, right? Maybe. That's exactly why you have to get it off your chest. Here's a trick. If you're keeping a secret that bothers you, you can try telling it all to a tree hollow. Uh, a tree hollow? Yeah, a tree hollow. Do you know Tanja's stories? The R&R living in the forest will patiently listen to every word children say. Maybe there really are R&R living in the tree hollows that will listen to you. You like the R&R stories too? Of course! I love them! Oh, people who like R&R are the best! <laughs> okay, I'll try telling my secrets to a tree hollow. Thanks, Miss Forest Ranger. You know everything. <laughs> Aw, you're just exaggerating. Anyway, I'm trying to be like my friend, who always does her best to cheer people up when they seem sad. So, how are you doing? Feeling any better now? The forest is very dangerous, so how about we stick together? Sure. Wow, Kali's so good with kids! <sighs> well, helping children who are lost in the rainforest is all part of her forest ranger's duty. So, what was it you wanted help with? You're not lost too, are you? Okay. So, you're looking for a children's author from Port Olmos called Tanja. And he's here in Gandarverville, looking for inspiration. Uh, wait, when you say Tanja, do you mean THE Tanja? That's right, Uncle Tanja! So he's in the area, looking for inspiration for a new story as we speak? This is amazing! Uh, can you wait for me for a second? I'll run Razi back to Gandarverville and then I'll be right back! 
I've always been curious what the man behind those incredible stories is like in person. <sighs> Tanja's just a normal guy. Even so, he must be more creative than most people. <sighs> Wait, hold on. Rossi, do you mean you've met Tanja before? Mm-hmm. He's my dad. Your dad? Tanja's your dad! As in you're Tanja's son? Uh-huh. Ah! Hi, Munzies! That guy at Akara Crass told us that Tanja brought his son along with him. So he meant Rosy! Why are you here on your own, though? Did you and Tanja get separated? I... <laughs> we had an argument. I was upset, so I ran off here by myself. Oh, in that case... We should take you back to Gundaverville first. Then we'll look for your dad and tell him where you are. No, I'm, I'm good. Thanks for your advice, Kalei. I'm not so upset anymore. Come with me. I'll take you to him. Yay! Thanks, Rosie! Paimon thought we'd be spending the whole day looking for him. Oh my gosh! I can't believe I'm actually gonna meet the Tanja! Oh. Hmm, so Tanja headed this way. Hmm, I know this place pretty well. Hmm, follow me! Rosie! Where are you, Rosie? Oh, Rosie! Thank goodness I finally found you. What would I do without you, my son? Were you in danger? Did the wild beast scare you? Did the stars guide your way? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, all thanks to their help. Thank you. Thank you all! I dare say that even the most cold-hearted Spino Crocodile would be moved to tears by your kindness. Oh, it's nothing. It's all part of my responsibility as a trainee forest ranger. I'm the one who should thank you for creating so many wonderful stories for the children of Sumeru. I... Uh, I love them too! Really? I didn't know anyone read my stories apart from young children. That must mean you're still in touch with your inner child. Hmm. Okay, then. I have the inspiration for my next story. It shall be about an Aranara granny who's a child at heart. Huh? It's... Uh, it's an honor to become the source of your inspiration. Whoa. Kale looks like she's about to pass out. Uh, hey Kale, are you okay? Uh, I I'm okay. Sorry, I, I just got a little too excited. Are you two story lovers as well? Yes, yes! The moment I saw you, the image of an aura giant and an aura finch traveling together popped into my mind. Excellent improvisation! Yes, mount your trusty steed of imagination and canter through the lush meadows of lyrical expression. 
You have the potential to become a celebrated storyteller too, you know. Um, seems like Kanja has a slightly exaggerated view of what it means to be a children's author. Also, Paimon's not a finch! That's nothing to get excited about! Akara Crafts. Akara Crafts. Oh! Oh, right, right. I remember now. That small boat once sailed into the sea of my memory, but before long it floated away over the horizon, never to be seen again. Perhaps for the best. After all, a wild tempest was a-raging in Tanger Harbor. Um, what? Paimon has no idea what he's saying. What should we do? Uh, do you think we should get Tainari to take a look at him? Dad's saying he forgot about helping the people at Akara Crafts learn more about Aranara because right now he has something more important to do. Oh, that's what he meant! Well, there it is! All the proof you needed that this kid is definitely Tanjir's son! Wait, no, this isn't the time for all that. Tanjir, your help is pretty vital to the toy makers. You gotta do something! But the garden that blooms before my eyes is of greater importance. For therein lies the beautiful Padisara that all the children of Sumeru dream of. I, Tanjir, have found evidence of Aranara activity right here in the Avidia Forest. Conclusively proving that Aranara not only exists in stories, but in real life too. If I manage to document the first real-life Aranara sighting, the petty problems that perplex Akara Crafts will be untangled in no time! Meanwhile, I may well be able to leverage this to assume leadership of the Academia. Then all across Sumeru will know of the great Tanja living in humble Port Ormos! any papers myself, but I think you need to have a bunch of them approved by the review board before entering the academia. You also need a detailed and objective experiment record. Uh, anyway, Tanja, what did you mean by evidence of r, &R activity? The hook's what's important in a story. The great storyteller Tanja never gives his audience the bait right away. Come with me! Wait, not that way. Kale, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. But that way leads us deeper into the Avidia Forest. I'm just concerned for Tanja's safety. And I think I'm starting to understand why Razi and Tanja were fighting. Just as I expected, the promise of one of my stories has kept you hot on my heels. But this is just an ordinary tree hollow. Paimon's not seeing any evidence of Aranara. You can deceive the eyes, but you can't deceive the heart. Look with your heart and you too will understand. Um, Paimon's not sure what look with your heart means, but anyway, let's start by investigating the area around this tree hollow. <laughs> hey, look! There's a note here! Uh, the handwriting's so hard to read! Um, do r and &R need to look... Here's another note! That's so more like something in R and R. There's another one here. Hmm. If only I were a clever R and R. A clever.
Clever Aranara. Is the emphasis on clever or Aranara? How does it feel to bear witness to a groundbreaking discovery? Exciting, isn't it? The crude handwriting may look like a child. I doubt that a child would be able to reach this deep into the forest, and I doubt even more that they would think of this lonely tree hollow as some sort of impenetrable castle. I boldly hypothesize that this tree hollow is in fact the Aranara's Academia. The notes we saw were written by the Aranara themselves. There is no doubt in my mind about that. An Aranara that wasn't so bright left a note here wishing to become a clever Aranara. Oh, I shall craft a new story for them and call it the Aranara in the Tree Hollow. How's that? Don't the very words just conjure up images of Aranara in your mind's eye? Uh, nope. Well, many an adventurer knows how to take to the skies with their easily visible wind gliders, yet they do not possess the invisible wings of imagination, making it hard for them to keep up with my train of thought. How about you, Miss Forest Ranger? Do you soar into the atmosphere on the wings of imagination? Huh? Me? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I do, but maybe not? Uh, anyway... It has nothing to do with me, so... Yeah, I'm fine. It's just that... Witnessing Tanja's creative process is a little... Oh. Overwhelming. Oh, yes. Y yes, overwhelming. For now, I've decided to stay here with Razi until we witness the legendary moment when the Aranara appear in this hollow. Don't worry, I won't let the Akara Crafts toy makers down. When a real Aranara appears, their little troubles will be resolved in an instant. He seems pretty stubborn. Looks like we'll have to stay here and wait a little longer. No. I think we should return to our camp first. Tanja, in Aranara and the Three Little Fungus, it says that Aranara are very sensitive creatures. I don't think they'll show up if we stay here. Oh? Was that in the story? Ah, yes, I remember now. Miss Forest Ranger, you sure know your stuff. In that case, let's go back to camp and call it a day. We'll continue our search for evidence first thing in the morning.
I create... Traveler! Traveler! Wake up! It's not the Aranara! It's Kale! She's gone! Oh, Paimon's been worried about Kale since last night. Even though she kept telling us she was okay after we saw the evidence of Aranara activity, she's been acting kind of strange. Anyway, let's go find her. Hey, look! Aren't these Kale's footprints? But why are they headed towards the tree hollow? So Kale came back here alone. Is she waiting for the R and R to show up? And I thought this was a place nobody knew about. I never thought Tanja would find it, or that I would run into the Traveler and Paimon. <laughs> if I'd known, I would have just told the Tree Hollow instead of writing it down. There must be another way to practice my handwriting. <laughs> now I've created a whole new problem for myself. Hmm, what do I do now? Dress up as an Aranara? Oh, no, 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 that won't work. I should be writing something that an Aranara would never say, so the Tanja won't mistake me for one of them. <laughs> oh, but what should I write? Oh, what should I write? Mm. Oh, I've got it! There's no way Tanja could see this as the work of an Aranara. So the evidence of Aranara activity we saw during the day was actually evidence of Kali's activity. But why didn't she just tell Tanja? Oh, right. Kale told Razi that he could tell any secret to a tree hollow. Must be because that's what she does. And now she even writes it down. Yeah, you're right. We'll keep her secret for her. Oh, looks like she's almost done writing. Let's head back. Aha! There's a new note just as I expected. Yes, yes! It's the same handwriting, which means it must have been written by the same Aranara. Let's see what it says. Ooh, what can it be? Uh, I want to visit Mondstadt during the Ludi Harpastum again? No, th that's impossible. This must be some kind of mistake. How could an Aranara go to Mondstadt for the Ludi Harpastum? Even I would never write that into a fairy tale. So, in other words, the notes can't have been left by an Aranara. If you ask me, they were probably left by a passing merchant from Mondstadt or something. Definitely not an Aranara. No! No, I refuse to believe it! <sighs> I can't. What do you mean you can't? It's not like it'll take you a huge amount of effort. You've written so many stories beloved by the children. I'm sure you can help create carvings that are just as successful. No! I can't do it. I thought that if I could find an r and &R, I'd be able to help Akara Crafts. But it was someone from Mondstadt all along. The 
You've managed to write all those stories without ever having seen a real R&R, &R, right? What makes this so different? I... Uh... <sighs> Rossi, you tell them. Really? Uh, can I? Yes, it's fine. Tell them. I know this is the moment you've been waiting for. Okay. Kale, Traveler, Paimon, do you remember when I said that there was a secret I didn't want to tell anyone? I didn't want to tell anyone the secret, but it made me feel very sad and also turned Dad into a completely different person. So, I think I should tell you. Dad isn't the one who came up with all those Aranara stories. Uh, what? Hold on. So if Uncle Tanja wasn't the author, then who was it? Uh, wait, you don't mean... It was me. Dad's been telling stories in Port Ormos for as long as I can remember. I always got to listen to all his new stories. Every night, Dad would give me a Zaytun peach for dinner, and I'd eat it while he told his stories. The Zaytun peaches were delicious, but Dad's stories were really bad. He always uses sentences that are really hard to understand, and... Strange, uh... Metaphors, I think they're called? But Dad kept on going, telling his stories again and again. One time, he even borrowed a camera from Lord Sange Mabe's shop and got me to take pictures of him in action. Dad showed me the picture and said that it shall become the precious record of Sumero's best storyteller early in his career. Even though I only had Zaytun peaches to eat and not so great stories to listen to, I was happy. Then one day, I tried telling Dad a story I came up with. Dad seemed really excited from the very beginning. He, he looked really happy. He lifted me up high into the air and told me to continue. He lifted me up so high that I was looking down at him. As I continued with my story, I saw his expression gradually change. And when I got to my favorite part, Dad started crying. I guess he must have been moved by my story. When Dad put me back down, I looked up at him again, but now he had a scary look in his eyes. You remember it so vividly. It's not only Rosie. I, too, remember every detail of what happened that day. After that, I gradually grew in fame and started making money. I became Sumeru's best storyteller, just as I always dreamed. Finally, we could afford more than just Zaytun peaches for dinner. I thought it would make Razi happy. I was really happy at first, but then everyone started calling me Tanja's son instead of Rozzy. I kind of guessed why, but I also didn't want to believe it. Dad got busier with things that had nothing to do with storytelling, like that request from Akara Crafts. So I made up my mind that this time, I just want to be good old Rozzy so that Dad will become good old Dad again. Instead of Dad the way he is now, starting every story with, Dedicated to my dearest Rosie. I prefer my dad how he used to be, stumbling over words and not knowing how to end the story. That's why I decided to keep how I imagine r, &R to look like a secret. Wait, Paimon gets it now. To sum up, all of Uncle Tanja's fairy tales were actually stories written by Rosie. And because Rosie didn't want Tanja to keep living a lie, he refused to help him with the Kara Crafts Commission. Hmm. 
Yes. That's why I tried looking for possible evidence of Aranara. But it turned out that I was just being a clown, as always. And not even a funny one. I'm a terrible father. I'm sorry, Rassi. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> and I owe you all an apology, too, for wasting your time. Rossi's the only one who can help Akara Crafts. If you can manage to persuade him, that is. Right now, I think I just want to find a tree hollow and be quiet for a while. Um, are we gonna let this happen? You want me to help Akara Crafts with their carving? Well, I did mention what the Aranara look like in my stories, but to make a carving, we might need more details. Kale, Traveler, and Paimon, I might need your help on this one. I've never really left Port Ormos before. This is my first time in Gandarvaville. Well, it's my first time being so far from home. Sumeru is so much bigger than I thought. Seeing new places has given me loads of new ideas for my R&R stories. So I want to visit more places in Sumeru. That way, I can help Akara Crafts create an R&R carving that everyone will love. And I also want to take pictures of Dad everywhere that we travel to. You... You still want me to come with you? Even after all I've done? Yeah, of course. Come on, you're the best dad ever. Huh? This is the happiest Razi has sounded since we met him. I want to thank you, Kale. Huh? Me? I... I didn't do anything to help. You told me about telling my secrets to a tree hollow. Even though I didn't have the time to find a tree hollow, telling everyone my secret made me feel so much better. <sighs> yeah, it's hard to keep too many secrets. And there's no need to hide our mistakes from others all the time. I made a lot of mistakes back in Mondstadt, but when I look back on them, it all feels more like a new beginning. I'm sure this experience will be the same for Tanja. Yes. I'll do my best to become a good father again. Wait. Did you just say you've been to Mondstadt? Ah. Uh, um. I just. Uh. Just passed by once. Never mind that. Come on now. A counter crafts is waiting for us. Let's go, Rosie. Grab that camera and see what hidden inspiration you can discover along the way. <laughs> okay, let's go. Come on, Dad. Rosie, slow down and watch your step. Traveler and Paimon. Master, I prepared the pharmaceutical equipment. Do you need me to help grind the medicine? No need. A precise dosage is required this time, so I'll do it myself. Oh. Okay. But once I'm done, you can deliver the medication to the child. 
He gets a little nervous when I'm around for too long. I don't think he finds me very approachable. I'll go prepare the medication. Traveler, give me a hand. doing a lot better, and his temperature is returning to normal. That's wonderful! Oh yeah, he asked me to tell you that Suna came by earlier, and he told her everything about the toy. Suna didn't get mad, so he wanted to thank you. Uh, can I ask what happened? It's nothing. Did you prepare the traveling gear I asked you to? Of course I did! Are you going somewhere far away? Yes. We're going to the contaminated region. Judging by its size, we will likely have to stay overnight. I'm leaving everything to you while I'm gone. Huh? But I, uh... I can't even begin to compare to you! Many things are learned by doing. And once they've been done, you'll realize they weren't as difficult as you once thought they were. Deal with problems as you yourself see fit. You don't have to emulate me. That's right! You'll do great, Kale! All right, then I'll do my best. Master, Traveler, Paimon, take care of yourselves. We'll be all right. You'll understand the reason for this excursion once we arrive at the contaminated region. You put too much confidence in me. Anyway, like you said, things will likely be uneventful. Let's return and find that crab. Traps weren't triggered, so it should still be here. Odd. You honored our agreement and waited here until we returned. As such, I'll hold up my end and give you another mechanical part. Keep it safe. I'm not giving you another one if you lose it. Glad you're satisfied. If you want more mechanical parts, take us deeper into the contaminated region. I want to see what happened there. What caused the Avidya forest to become like this? contaminated region that everyone's been talking about. Oh, it definitely looks different from normal. It's like, really creepy and suffocating. Do you feel unwell at all? Good, it's as I predicted. Elemental power confers a degree of resistance against the contaminated region's influence. How do you know that? I haven't entered the contaminated region for a proper investigation, but I've conducted quite a few controlled experiments. My observations during our time here have all but confirmed my hypothesis. Look at these flowers. How are they different from normal? This flower species is formally known as the Sumeru Rose, but it is also known as the Ley Line Lodestar. They're sensitive to ley lines and emit varying amounts of light in response. 
Excessive brightness indicates a dangerous level of ley line activity in the surrounding area. From the looks of things, the ley lines around here are already out of control. You're saying the contamination here is coming from ley lines? I can't confirm that right now, but I think that is the case. Let's take another look around and see if we can discover more clues. This contaminated region currently appears to have a critical efflux of ley line energy, which is probably the root cause of the patient's cognitive disturbances. Some animals have keen awareness. They sensed something abnormal in this area and fled. Leaky ley lines sure can cause a lot of damage, huh? Like how plants have preferred growth conditions, we also gradually habituate to our surrounding environment. Climate, temperature, humidity, intensity of ley line energies. When people live under fixed conditions, they reach a sort of homeostasis with their environment. This equilibrium is broken when the surrounding environment abruptly changes, causing people's bodies to react in abnormal ways. If normal fluctuations in temperature occur, then our bodies automatically adjust. However, the average person cannot adapt to changes in ley line energy, and so they fall ill. Then why are we okay? I'm not sure why you are, but she and I are fine because our elemental capabilities allow us to adapt to this kind of change. Of course, it's not a good idea to spend too much time in areas with concentrated ley line energy. The only one who can freely traverse this place is probably the mechanical crab. That's about it for the investigation. Help me find an open space. I want to test something. <laughs> Environment, no wind. Target parameters, normal. Setup complete. Excellent. Looks like it's working. What's this? A purification device that I made. It can absorb excess ley line energy and temporarily stabilize an area. What a neat thing! Let's set up more and cover the entire region! I wouldn't mind if that would actually work. Unfortunately, once this contamination is present, it isn't something that a few purification devices can fix. The purification devices have their limits. At best, they can only prevent the contaminated region from expanding temporarily. If we want to permanently eradicate the contamination from the ley line effluence, we'll need to tackle the source. That's right. Huh? The mechanical crab is acting a little strange. Something's approaching. So that's it! Now that the ley line energy has stabilized, the monsters that had left are starting to return. Get rid of them quickly! Don't let them get close to the purification device! Get on! By royal decree! Midnight Phantasmagoria! Upon 
Injuries are superficial. Don't move, I'll patch you up. Who are you all? What happened to those mechanical monsters? Don't worry, we took care of them. Oh, good. <laughs> That's uh, good. Uh, it's a monster! Uh, hurry, attack it! How do we explain this? Uh, Krabby here isn't a bad guy. It heard you shouting for help and brought us here to rescue you. It's faking it. It has to be! Maybe it's gonna partner up with the other mechanical monsters and kill me! Do you know what's inside the forest? It's all... It's, it's all crawling with mechanical freaks! I just came here to pick herbs, but I accidentally went into the contaminated region and almost died. Hmm. I gotta get out of here. Oh, yes. Yes. I have to escape. Be careful. These mechanical life forms are up to no good. It'd be best if you stayed far, far away from them. Ugh, no wonder the Academia wanted to completely ban the existence of mechanical life forms. Ugh, those things should be annihilated! Uh, are you okay? His inarticulate speech and bodily tremors indicate psyche disruption. He's been inside the contaminated region for too long. We've purified the leyline energy over there. Follow this path out and you'll soon see the village. At that point, someone will bring him to Kale for help. I already prepared medication that will return him to normal. Hmm. So you think you did a good job and want a part as your reward? It's so hard to understand. All right, regardless of what you're thinking, you did some real good this time. That's why I'll give you another mechanical part. Need any help with it? Guess not. Well, make sure to hang on to it. <sighs> what was going through your owner's mind when he made you, I wonder? You're like a giant mechanical crab on the outside and a fluffy little hamster on the inside. And also... How do you feel about that person saying that you're as evil as the other mechanical life forms? Okay, it definitely doesn't understand you. It seems like it possesses limited understanding only towards matters related to mechanical components. Help others to get parts. That's probably its thought process. As for why it... Or rather, its owner is collecting so many components. I'm not sure. It's getting late, so let's set up camp for the night. We'll explore further tomorrow, after a night's rest. Hey, over here! Come on, you big lummox, raise your head and look up!
let's set up camp here. All right. Paimon also thinks it's a good spot. Oh. Any particular reason? This place is perfect to put up a big tent. We can also set up a cooking pot and cook tons of delicious food. You're not wrong, but the primary reason for choosing this place is because its higher elevation keeps us away from the water vapor below. Rainforests are very wet. You should always be careful when spending the night in damp places. For the next tasks at hand, let's divide and conquer. I'll set up the tent, you'll be in charge of making the fire, and Paimon will forage for edibles nearby. Leave it to Paimon. Paimon's a pro. I'm not expecting that much. Just do what you can. That's right! You can use rushes to start a fire in the wilderness. Their pits are relatively dry and can be readily set aflame. The downside is that they produce a lot of smoke. Traveler! Tainari! Paimon couldn't find any food! Paimon didn't know that Rainforest had so many interesting plants until we came here! There were all sort of weird-looking mushrooms, but... Paimon didn't know which ones were edible. Paimon also saw wild berries on the ground, and Paimon was gonna fly over and pick them up, but the dead leaves on top suddenly started moving. It freaked Paimon out. Those were probably dead leaf butterflies. They camouflage as dead leaves to evade predators. My guess is that they mistook you for a bird when you flew over, so they fled. Little did they know that you were more scared than they were. Never mind. The tent's up, so you two go rest. I'll forage for food. Oh, you found some already. Paimon understands it this time! It wants mechanical parts again! Sorry, no part this time. That task wasn't important enough. If every little thing resulted in a reward, then it might start to take advantage of the system. I'll note little things like this and give a cumulative reward at a later time. Ahem, <clears throat> that is one reason. It looks really sad. <sighs> After some further thought, it might come up with some weird misunderstanding if I don't give it something. All right, here's another for you. I'm off to prepare dinner. We'll take shifts on lookout duty tonight. You two can sleep first. I'll wake you up later. We need lookouts? Yes. Even though most animals fled because of the ley lines, we can't completely let down our guard. It's settled then. I'll set up some pest repelling devices so poisonous insects don't come crawling into the tent. Have a good night. Not too good though. Getting sleepy. Uh, is this because of the ley lines? It's been a while since we camped outside like this. <laughs> this feels like when we just started adventuring together. <sighs> Nighty night. You're awake earlier than I expected. 
Did you sleep well? You have to maintain constant vigilance in dangerous places like this. Yawning all the time like that is no good. If you can't stay awake, it's okay. Go sleep some more. I'm not tired yet. Really? You don't need to push yourself. I'm used to staying up all night because many plant and animal species can only be observed during nighttime. Speaking of which, have you seen the crab? It was scampering around over there just now, but I don't know where it went. So you can tell. My suspicion is less towards the crab and more directed to its unrevealed owner. A ley line effluence of this magnitude occurred without any warning. Someone probably disrupted the natural flow of the ley lines. Until we fully understand the situation, take extra caution. The academia has banned mechanical life form research for years, so the origin of these creatures is very suspect. Topics related to mechanical life forms were popular in the Spontama for a time. Some of my juniors had also thrown themselves into such research. They proposed an intriguing idea. Use our knowledge to create a new and practical life form that could help humanity conquer nature. However, no matter which modules or parts are installed, a machine is innately a construct that receives and executes commands. They can never possess self-awareness like us or other living organisms. In their pursuit to discover the differences between mechanical and biological life forms, zealous researchers performed unregulated vivisections and other absurdly cruel experiments on animals. Research on mechanical life forms was thus banned. The irony is that the researchers became even more impetuous afterward. Who knows? Maybe this subject will be unbanned in a few years. Hmm. That's a difficult question to answer. I'm interested in the topic of mechanical life, but I don't like the researchers' attitudes. It's just my personal opinion. My ancestors and the Veluka Shuna of the desert coexisted together and supported one another. The blood of my people were born from this symbiotic relationship. So to me, all life is important. To understand life, you must first respect it. Life is not an expendable commodity, and knowledge should not be wielded like a scepter. These are the points of contention I have with some researchers, and why I left the academia. By placing yourself above other life forms, what kind of results do you expect to get from researching pure life with impure intentions? Really? Well, I'm glad to hear it. Coffee? Did you prepare this for us? All right, seeing that you're working so hard to help out, I'll give you another part. You're not planning on using it. Many of your own parts are critically degraded, and you're running low on power. All right, suit yourself. Oh, and thanks for the coffee, but I'm about to go to sleep. Leave it with her. The night watch is yours. Stay safe. Good morning, Traveler and Paimon. Mm. Quick question, do you feel off at all? Mm, me too. The farther in we go, the closer we get to the source of the ley line effluence. We'll be heading out earlier today. I'll take down the tent. Is there something we can do? Extinguish our fire so we don't set the entire forest aflame. Also, 
Retrieve the pest repelling devices from last night. We don't want to affect the ecosystem here. Got it! Paimon will take care of the fire! All right. Let's meet back here later. All right. It's about time to head out. As we go further in, we may encounter more Berserk machines. The effects of the ley lines will also increase. If you're struggling, it would be wise to avoid conflict. Try to conserve as much energy as possible until we reach the source of the contamination. As I thought, the closer we get to the contamination source, the more mechanical monsters that appear. Upon closer inspection, the plants here are really different. Leyline energies are also stronger here. This may be the place we've been looking for. Ready yourselves. We're going in. What's your battle plan? There's a ton of mechanical monsters here! They made this place their lair! Looks like there's no way to sneak by. Let's take care of them quick. Keep up. Yeah, by royal decree. I hear everything. Leyline energy is spilling out from here. This device, it's extracting energy from the ley lines without end. Who in the world would do this without considering the consequences? The ley lines won't be able to repair themselves if their flow is perpetually disrupted like this. 
That's terrible! We have to stop it! Oh, a Paimon C. Uh... Oh... Paimon doesn't see controls anywhere! Standing here is equivalent to being directly showered in ley line energy, which may cause irreversible damage to your body. Take Paimon and get out of here. I'll see if I can find a way to turn this thing off. Wait, you're also vulnerable to the ley lines, right? We're staying. We can't leave you here by yourself. <sighs> then let's look for it together. If there is no control unit here, then there must be a trap door somewhere. You know where it is? Hey! Wait for us! What's this? It'll only show up if you step on it? Be careful, and watch your step. body is cold. It's emaciated, and his eyes are sunken, likely from chronic malnourishment and stress. He collapsed and never got back up. What exactly happened here? Oh, almost forgot about you. Here, this is the last one. What is it doing? Hmm, I'm not sure. Judging by this room's layout, this place was a laboratory. We should find a repository of research documents if we keep going. The file room will definitely give us some clues, so let's go take a look. Maybe we can piece together what happened here. This place is a natural hiding spot with how hidden it is. The pipes continue further. Did you two find anything? There are a lot of lab notes, but it would take way too long to read through them all. I found a tape recording used for an experiment, and based on its serial number, it's from two years ago. Tape recording? Yes, the Spontama created a device that visually records experiments and consolidates the final production into a tape. However, these devices are expensive to make and aren't entirely stable. That's why they are only used in some laboratories and do not see wider usage. Come on, let's watch it! Hold on, let me figure out how to play the tape. Goes in there. Ah, okay, this should do it. Kakata? Kakata? Seriously, I look away for one second and you're gone? There you are! Look here, this is our new home. I, Abatui, will unleash my talents here and amaze those ancient fossils at the Academia. Oh? You're also quite happy. Kakata, do you know what we're about to do? <laughs> yes, I thought not. Listen up, Kakata. I'm going to make a mechanical life form that can be mass produced. The technology will be unlike anything else that exists. I'll use mechanical organs, and electric currents will course through them like blood, a steel cast heart that will beat forever, and a brain of myriad components that can think like mine. Inspiration from the ruins and the research that the Academia had banned. I hope everything can start anew from this place. When you can understand our language and live among us, you will no longer be a boring machine, but a truly living being! It's fine. You will understand. 
One day, you will understand me. Karkata is the mechanical crab, right? And that researcher named Abatui said he wanted to prove something to the academia? I remember now. I had a junior researcher named Abatui. He was expelled from the academia for researching mechanical life forms. Junior researcher? Yeah? Well, what's wrong? Nothing. Paima was just wondering, doesn't Abatui look older than you? He is, but academic progression isn't tied to age. I finished my studies a while ago, so subsequent students generally considered me as their senior. Oh. Of course, age can be an issue. For a while, people always dragged me into pictures. I felt like some kind of animal on display. <clears throat> uh, that isn't important. Let's go and see if we can find other tape recordings. Quite the time gap. I wonder what happened in between. It's rare that you malfunction because of an operational error. Seems that making coffee is still somewhat difficult for you. Or is there an issue with my set parameters? All right, there you go. Water entered the keela and caused it to short circuit, so it couldn't receive signals from the ganglion. Look at me, talking to you like this. You can't understand me anyway, can you? It's fine. I swapped in some new parts, so you should be alright now. Try moving around. Everything in working order? Be more careful next time. We're tight on money right now, so we don't have a lot of parts or power to spare. I'm glad. Karkata, did you know? Yesterday, I dreamed that you could talk. Aren't the bunch at the academia always saying things like, mechanical intelligence is just an extension of statistics? They were blown away when they saw us talking with each other. Too bad it was just a dream. Forget holding a conversation with me. You're so simple that you probably wouldn't even notice if I died. Never mind. I should probably be worrying about next month's power. After Abatui left the academia, everyone lost contact with him. I thought he was so despondent that he gave up on researching mechanical life forms. Instead, he had holed up here and continued his experiments. Paimon doesn't feel like he's a bad person. He even changed out Karkata's broken parts! Why would he mess with ley lines? Hmm... Let's keep looking around. serial numbers, the next recording should be here. The writing is sloppy. Perhaps his state of mind had changed. There's also an undated tape in the wrong spot. Doesn't seem like Abatui put it there. Maybe Karkata helped him with sorting. Hmm. It's hard to say. These are the last two tape recordings. Let's watch them. Sorry, Karkata. I was just thinking about something. Today might become a special day. Am 
my recent experiments, I successfully gave you a living being's instincts. When you're low on power, or if one of your parts is damaged, you will prioritize your survival command and proactively recharge or replace your parts. That is a very dangerous thing. And today, I did something even more dangerous. I've officially activated the third generation ley line extractor. The ley lines will serve as our power source from now on. Conducting research on mechanical life forms requires a large amount of power. Even if I scrimped and saved, the more I have wouldn't last for long. I'm also getting tired, Karkata. I don't know what's driving me to continue with this research anymore. They say that even if it simulates the operation of a living creature's organs, a machine is still an ice-cold tool. I want to prove them wrong. I want to turn you into a living, breathing, and talking being. I'm not talking about anything cheerful, Karkata. Modules for language, emotion, and movement. I've been working my absolute hardest to augment and refine your functionalities, but I've never seen an effective response. You are my finest success, but even you can't understand me. All you can do is execute limited responses based on preset commands or keywords. Karkata, I wish you could speak to me, even just once. <sighs> yes, you cannot understand me, so you cannot answer me either. It is what it is. In a few days, I'll sell the failed ley line extractor for some more and continue my experiments. Life goes on, and I have to as well. I don't have any other choice. This is no. If I place another two control modules here to simulate the brain's thalamus. Oh, of course, my heart decides to act up now. Why did I cut medication from our expenses? Karkata, come help me. <coughs> Strange. I feel weak. Oh no, I have to shut down the extractor. Shut it off. <coughs> If we let them recharge indefinitely, they'll go out of control. Right. I never input a command to shut down the extractor, so you don't understand what I'm saying. In the end, it's just like the Academia said. Mechanical life forms only bring danger. My research... Was there any point to it at all? I'm sorry, Kakata. In the end, I still wasn't able to turn you... into a true... mechanical... life... form. I see. So the ley line effluence was an accident. After Abatui's unexpected death, the mechanical monsters were driven by their instincts and continuously drew out power from the ley line extractor. This eventually resulted in severe damage to the ley lines. Paimon understands. Then why didn't Karkata go haywire like the other machines? Because Karkata is different from the other machines. Structures similar to living organisms, the ability to cry and laugh, and capacity for independent thought. To Abatui, only a machine with these features could be considered a mechanical life form. Perhaps only by building such a machine could he have the academia acknowledge his protracted research. But if he had slowed down and saw Karkata as a friend instead of an experimental product, he would have noticed. Karkata can't speak. And yet it cares about Abatui far more than it does about itself. What does that mean? 
you'll see in a bit. But before that, we have a more urgent task at hand. First, let's find the control unit for the ley line extractor and shut it down. this transparent flooring. It feels like a maze. Below us is the final room. The control unit is likely in there. The land's here! Hmm. Wanna try jumping down? This should be the control unit. Once we turn it off, the ley line extractor should also shut down. Without an external force damaging the ley lines, they should start to slowly repair themselves. Oh, but I bet you two are more worried about Karkata. Let's head back.
Carcata has been collecting parts because it thinks doing so will fix its owner? Carcata is unable to understand the concept of death. However, it probably remembers when Abatui replaced its parts when it malfunctioned, and how that restored it to an operational state. It's true that Carcata isn't able to think or understand many topics, but it is like a small child that imitates what adults do. So that's why it kept stealing mechanical parts. But it can't repair its owner, no matter how hard it tries. Yes, but the important thing is that it formed the thought of wanting to repair Abatui. No one knows how this thought came to be, but it has even suppressed the instincts that Abatui had installed. If it really is as we've predicted, this research truly will make waves in the academia. It might have been possible to achieve this with ancient technology, but no one has been able to do the same with modern tools. Karkata? Karkata? Can you hear Paimon? Tainari says you're awesome! <sighs> it reached its limit. It hasn't recharged this entire time. Nor has it replaced its severely damaged parts. It's a miracle that it managed to hang on for so long. I'm going to confirm that the ley line extractor has shut down. Come with me. Let them be alone for a while. The leyline extractor has ceased operations. Traces of leyline energy are still in the atmosphere, but the effluence's source has been stopped. The purification devices will handle the rest. Moving on, those affected by the ley lines need immediate care. We'll put up an announcement on the bulletin board about the dangers of entering the contaminated region, and for symptomatic individuals to find Kale. According to the Academia's policies, we need to bring everything back. Research materials related to mechanical life forms will be destroyed, and Karkata will be disassembled and sealed away. What the heck? You two should return first. I'll take care of things here. Although we've stopped the source of the effluence, the ley line energy in the air exceeds normal values. Your bodies won't be able to hold up if you continue to stay here. Listen, the Traveler hasn't rested very well, right? Also, it'll take some time to pack up all the research documents. You're not familiar with this research after all, so you won't be of much use here. Tell the Adventurer's Guild that the incident has been resolved, and then get some sleep. We can discuss matters tomorrow. Oh, and don't talk about Abatui. The fewer that know about mechanical life form research, the better. All right. Then let's go back to Catherine. deep in the forest. Things are already getting back to normal. I see. Thank you for your hard work. Once the excess ley line energy dissipates from the air, we should be able to make an announcement for residents to resume their normal activities. This is the stipulated reward. Please accept it. Is Karkata going to be sent back to the Academia? It's already damaged, but Paimon feels sad thinking about
about it getting disassembled. Oh, then how about we find Tainori tomorrow and ask him not to do that? Paimon really wants to go right now, but Tainari said that we would discuss matters tomorrow. We'll probably make him mad if we go now, huh? Alright then, we'll find Tainari tomorrow and tell him not to disassemble Karkata. Keep your voice down. The Lilac Daphne, a Daphne of the genus Themeliaceae, has a strong anti-convulsant effect, can be made into an anesthetic powder. Extrapolating from these two data sets, it would be particularly potent against Piscine species. Hey, make sure you're getting all this down. I told you all to keep your voices low. Plants aren't afraid of noise, but your shouting is making my ears ring. You... you didn't disassemble Karkata? Why would I do that? But... Paimon thought you said, according to the Academia's policies... So that's why you two barged in like barbarians at this hour. Fine, I suppose I wasn't clear enough about this yesterday. What I meant was, according to the Academia's policies, all products of research must be destroyed. That's why we can't let the Academia discover that place. Anyway, the first thing I did was repair Karkata. During my time at the Academia, I took an elective course at the Spantama. Who knew it would prove useful one day? We then buried Abatui together. After organizing the research materials, I kept some as a souvenir. Most of it was burned to hide the evidence. I'm not with the Academia, so what do their policies have to do with me? On the other hand, I am the Forest Watcher of the Avidya Forest. I have a duty to protect all life in the forest. All life brought forth in this world has meaning, and Karkata is no exception. If it exists, then it shouldn't be carelessly abandoned or destroyed. <laughs> Wait, you just said life form. You recognize Karkata as a true living being now? The possibility exists, is all. It's hard to explain Karkata's efforts to repair Abatui. Abatui only left behind a small portion of his research. Who knows how many commands he installed? Maybe a conflict between all those commands resulted in this sort of behavior. From a more rigorous perspective, it is impossible to conclude that Karkata is a real life form. But the possibility exists. I am willing to believe in that. 
by the way, I'm not interested in continuing research on this subject. I'm just letting it hang out here because this place is relatively secluded. But as things stand now, it wouldn't be a bad idea to make it my research assistant. At the very least, it can record my experiments. What do you think? <laughs> When people at the Academia included me in a group, I have zero interest in group photos, but I also wouldn't just throw them away. I stored them all in a box. After coming back yesterday, I looked through them and found one with Abatui. I gave it to Karkata, and it seemed happy. That's good enough. <laughs> 